According to the latest survey of gamers by Statista.com, there are over 3.24 billion gamers around the world. That is almost half of the world population. Gaming was once something to pass the time and is now something that people can make a living off of while streaming. People who lost their jobs because of the Rona turned to blogging and a surge of content creators on various social media platforms came in. And people see this as a massive opportunity to earn money by investing in a business that offers what bloggers, content creators, and gamers need. Hello and welcome to Wealth Gambit. In this video, we cover the latest stock trends and research. If you like that type of content, be sure to like and subscribe for more. Please note that we are not financial advisors, so please do your own due diligence. We noticed that 80% of our viewers aren't subscribed to our channel, so if you aren't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and comment down below where you think the stock is heading. Today, we'll be going over one of the leading global developers and manufacturers of high performance gear and technology for gamers, content creators, and PC enthusiasts. Corsair Gaming. Will Corsair fully revolutionize the gaming world as we see it today? In case you didn't notice, Wall Street Bets is playing a huge role in the market today. The word of mouth of Wall Street Bets has beaten all the rest of the marketing strategies a company could ever pull off because if they want a stock to fly and a snap, they get it. But what if the fundamentals get better and the sleeping giant wakes up to shatter every short's dream on Corsair Gaming? Tune in and let's find out why shorts are in danger for the stock. Going over the stock's short interest, this one has 8.7 million shares is shorted and that's about 24.82 percent of the float or the available shares in the market and if you would compare it to the previous months it even got worse as more and more shorts seem to be interested in this stock while articles suggest it's the general market force at work here favoring the cyclical tech growth stocks company executives unloading the boat selling their corsair shares may also be one of the culprits behind the sky high short interest imagine nearly one fourth of the entire float is shorted and it's significantly higher than any other meme stocks like GameStop stop and amc at the moment you might want to ask who is shorting corsair gaming ask away because we're saving you time for some research in the past quarter many of the institutional investors are shorting corsair gaming big time and as you can see here Citadel Advisors LLC holds the biggest short position with over 1 million shares shorted. If you don't know who Citadel is, they're a massive hedge fund established in the early 90s led by Kenneth Griffin. So we want to know why the insiders are selling and the suits are already on track. Would this be another regret for the shorts? <laughs> Tesla, or are the suits taking the dub on this one? Corsair Gaming reported revenue advanced 24% year over year, reaching $473 million. It suggested EBITDA, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization, was $51.6 million, up 4% year over year. Gamer and creator peripheral segment net revenue was $155.2 million, an increase of 40.9% year over year. Gaming component and system segment net revenue were $317.7 million, an increase of 17.6% year over year. But their earnings per share came in short of their estimates, and this is what Corsair CEO Andy Paul has to say about it. This is really a short-term issue, right? We've got uh, a, a situation where there's, uh, the supply chains are all clogged up, and um, you know there's a tough time getting containers. But this is a short-term issue. This will all be resolved by the end of this year, I think. So, you know, we, we tend to look at this as a as a, as a long-term investment, and I think that's the way investors should really look at it. I'm not, to be honest, if you focus on quarter by quarter, you know, earnings, whether we're getting 99% or 101% of of the analysts' uh, consensus, that's really the last thing. You know, what we're, invest, uh, what we're concentrating on here is being right in front of a massively growing market and uh, bringing great products to market. So that's really what I'm focused on. Their outlook for the full year of 2021. Net revenue to be in the range of 1.9 billion to 2.1 billion. Adjusted operating income to be in the range of 235 million to 255 million. Adjusted EBITDA to be in the range of 245 million to 265 million. Also, in his interview with Yahoo Finance, Corsair CEO Andy Paul was asked about his thoughts on the downfall movement of Corsair's price stock and was asked to give his message to the so-called meme investors. He answered, this is not a, a stock that you do short-term gains on. And, you know, obviously we're not building the company for the benefit of day traders. But if you invest in a company like this, you invest in the long-term secular gaming growth, the long-term streaming growth, and the fact that we've got an ability to bring out lots and lots of great products. That should be the investment thesis, not what we think, you know, you think the stock's going to be doing tomorrow. So, yeah, so this is a long-term play. And uh, I think ultimately that's going to, that's going to you know, play out. Obviously, we've, we've got a lot of things going on between you know, retail investors versus hedge fund shorting. And that's a battle we watch with sort of vague interest. But uh, the fundamentals of the stock really, in my opinion, should be based on long-term growth and uh, our ability to win in the market.
Corsair Gaming is not your typical gaming console maker. It offers cases, keyboards, Elgato audio, gaming PCs, cameras, power supplies, custom cooling fans, gaming chairs, and basically anything a gamer could ever need. Corsair Gaming was founded by its now CEO, Andrew Paul, together with John Beakley and Don Lieberman in January of 1994. The company was primarily built to focus exclusively on hardware for enthusiast builders. Upon seeing the growing market of people joining esports, they saw expanding into the PC peripheral space as an exciting opportunity. And sure enough, they were not wrong. CEO Andrew Paul says, We believe there is a large number of gaming enthusiasts in the wings waiting to build a new PC on top of the elevated numbers of people that actually did build a new gaming rig. Even analysts are on the same page with the person behind the stock with so much potential, as they revealed that this highly competitive market is about to grow at an unstoppable pace from this day forward. With these solid growth opportunities, analysts project about a 257 billion dollar revenue in the global gaming industry by 2025. Corsair Gaming CEO was also asked his view about people now being able to once again go outside and do outside activities, which could mean people could spend less time playing video games. Well, yeah, so it's not a digital yes or no. I mean, pe people aren't playing more games now because of COVID. Certainly, this has been a long term trend, right? I mean, I've been looking at video game uh, number of gamers, you know, over the last 10 years, and it's steadily going up. Obviously, a slight acceleration last year, but it's not as though people are going to come away, start going to restaurants and stop playing games. What's really happening here is that the amount of games that people were playing last year uh, obviously stepped up, the amount of hours played, and that's increased everyone's skill level. So now you've got a lot of people that are much better at playing whatever game they were you know, they were playing, whether it's Call of Duty or Valorant or whatever. Uh, once you get better at a game, then you start looking for equipment. So what's really happened is we've sort of had a big surge in activity that's now starting to see a surge in people wanting to buy better keyboards, better mouse, better gaming PCs. And that's why the demand's so high. So I don't think this is going to be a situation where as soon as people go out to restaurants, they're going to stop gaming and the demand falls away. I think this is laying out a, you know, a carpet for the next few years of, of uh, really high demand of, uh, of gaming gear. The number of gamers is constantly growing over the years, regardless of the Rona hitting humanity globally again. People on Reddit anticipate its stock price to go up very quickly within a short period of time, hence their term, Gamma Squeeze. Furthermore, institutional investors such as Vanguard Group and Susquehanna Financial Group had already participated in Corsair's future success by buying its shares while the price dipped. At the time of making this video, Corsair's stock is moving around $29 per share, and business analysts in Nasdaq, TipRanks.com, and on on Wall Street have all agreed that Corsair's average stock should be around $39 and that is 35% up from its current price today. And it's only a matter of time until Corsair stock eventually goes to the moon and shorts may get the spanking of a lifetime. With all of that information laid out, there is no doubt that Corsair is definitely a buy. It has proven itself to be consistently growing through the years. The growing number of people turning to video games and other stuff online is one of the great ways to view Corsair's success. And when the figures, analysts, the market, and investors are all in the same side would you take the risk anyways that's it for today's video if you find any value in this content please hit that like and subscribe button and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you'll be updated with our weekly content until next time peace